to the uh, Hearthstone NVIDIA Pro-Am tournament. Sorry about that delay. We're just trying to get the players set up uh, for the next match. We have Tides versus Sixto coming up on stream, and that's going to be pretty exciting. What do you think about that one, Nimsh? Oh, man, Cloud9 versus Team Archon. Um, that's always something really exciting. Like, when the team, the team clashes, like, you know, Cloud9, Temple Storm, Archon... And um, Tides of Time being a player that's uh, a deck builder himself, and uh, lately we haven't seen that much of Tides, but he's still one of the top, uh, one of the top players at a gamers ranking as well. And uh, you know he was um, building new decks, and he's uh, always communicating with us on the team chat. Uh, so he has some um, personal brews. And Sixo, well, he just uh, was he top four at the Seed Story Cup. I believe uh, he was top four in the end. Yes, he again, right? That's again. Just yeah, that's the fun part, because he was top four last time, but this time around, uh, he was top four again, and I believe this time he lost to Oskaka, though, who ended up losing in the finals. The thing was, he lost to Savitz in his first uh, Seed Story Cup, and that's how he got stopped. All, All right, right so... uh, looks like we have a little bit of a cam issue here. That's not six so by the way. <laughs> All right, sounds good. So the lineups that players brought, uh, Tides brought Druid, Hunter, and Warrior, and Sixo brought Shaman, Rogue, and Warlock. Uh, Sixo starting with his trusty Shaman deck with Fell Reaver, we already see the card, and Tides going with the Face Hunter. Uh, who do you think has an edge in this match? Uh, I have to say that whoever can get something to stick by turn two or three... Um, so right now, I think Sixo is at a pretty large advantage because he has the uh, the Fell Reaver next turn. Because now Tides is forced to trade a little bit, like reduce the damage to try and make sure he can stabilize on board. Um, and if Sixo misses a drop here, then he's kind of in trouble. Although he still has the Earth Shock and he can put on pressure against Face Hunters, so it, it basically comes down to whoever can get the better edge and damage wise, and then. Not blink first, because there is that snake trap, right, for tides. So six yeah. is never going to want to trade whatsoever. A uh, fell reaver is such an interesting card, especially in this matchup. Like most of the time, uh, people play BGH, but Hunter doesn't play the BGH, and um, most of the hunters in the past they play Hunter's Mark. But Hunter's Mark is less and less popular, especially in the face hunter. There is Iron Begal. People play two owls, but then silencing an eight eight doesn't matter that much. So, uh, right now, Sixo positioned himself to have lots of damage, especially with the Doomhammer in his hand and Krakow. Uh, that's a lot of damage. So, can... Like, this is a race, basically. Who's going to win this race? Right. Well, Sixo... Ooh, well, he ha he almost had lethal. Um, but that Explosive Trap actually makes him one short, because he can't do 17 damage. He only can do 16. Now, it, of course, Tides realizes that it's very easy for his opponent to simply get that. Uh, Sixo d can still roll with a high crackle, um, but if he can't get this damage with the Pilot Shredder, that's going to be really tough. What can he get with the Pilot Shredder, though? If there is unstable gold, that would be so devastating for Tides of time. I don't think he... Is he going to kill out the Shredder, or is he just going to let the Explosive Trap threaten to kill and force him to trade? Because he has Snake I Trap, right? Yeah, I like the explosive trap better. Um, he just needs to count like how much damage can Shaman deal, and make some uh, some gambles as well. Make a risk assessment. Like, what does Shaman need to have in his hand in those three cards to kill me, and how much damage it will be in total? Yeah, right, it's still plenty face here. And his opponent doesn't have lightning storm. The only out I think was. Rockbiter. Now he's caught in a really awkward spot where, like, uh, picking off some of these minions actually creates more minions, and you don't reduce damage that much. I'm trying to count if Flame Tongue Totem is lethal, but I don't think it is. It's 12 points of damage. Um, no, it's not even. Like, 8 from Fell Reaver. He needs to deal 9. If he gets a Flame Tongue Totem and then rolls a spell. Power, spell damage, totem from the totem, and then crackles for six, for seven actually with the spell damage, then that's lethal. Wow. That is pretty intense. Yeah. 
Uh, so the explosive trap will trigger. Let's see what comes out of the pilot shredder first. Loot no. holder is kind of like a blank. Yeah. And I think that's actually it. Uh, right. With so much damage from Hunter, there is a quick shot in Tide's hand as well. I don't think there's anything Sixo can do here. No, he needed that um, pilot shredder to trade into something. He's gonna crackle his loot hoarder just on the off chance he might get a Noyotron. No, that's gonna do it. I mean, Sixo reaching to every single corner of his room to try and get himself out of this one, but uh, he can't. He can't finagle himself out of this situation. Ties his hunter. Goes for a two-minute win. These aggro decks, man, they've been coming out in full force. Uh, really trying to put their mark on the metagame and, and exploit Conquest. Because the thing about aggro decks is that they draw much more consistently, generally speaking, because of their low curve. So oh, yeah. uh, putting on some real big pain here. And it's one thing I do like is that it's there's a variety of aggro decks, um, not just one in the past. It used to be simply just Hunter. Uh, but at the same time, it's it's like... Where are the control decks, Nimsh? Well, where are the heavy are control decks with dragons? It's coming out in yeah. a couple minutes, right? Well, maybe we'll get some dragons after all the cards from BRM are released, but uh, we've seen some control decks, and, um, you know, with, with all those aggro decks, you can bring the decks that, uh, that counter the, the, the setup. So we've seen Ignite uh, bring free anti aggro decks, and he actually got to the top eight. He almost got to top four as well with his uh, lineups. He but should then, have gotten top four. That's yeah, the, he should have that's, gotten. That's, <laughs> that's true. But then, um, you know, Face Hunter is so strong. Like, I've seen many times Face Hunter just uh, killing Warrior and going through all the armor and taunts, uh, just silencing them. And even with Quickshot, like, Quickshot improved the deck. Especially where Quickshot is one of the first cards we got from BRM, uh, Face Hunter got a small boost. Like maybe after all the cards are released, uh, it will balance out a bit more. But now with the, um, the Hunter cl class card being available for Hunters earlier uh, than others, uh, they got definitely like a, a, a better power level there. All right. Well, Tides does have a Warrior, and I would assume that it's that's the control deck we were looking for. Um, and let's go straight into the game. There is the Druid, and there's a Druid of the Flame. Nice. As well as Recombobulator. All right, so Tides is known for doing some really funky things, but you already saw three cards in which puts him in a interesting spot. Uh, Druid of the Flame is great as anti-aggro. If it's a 2-5, it often can trade 2 for 1, maybe even more. And, uh, you know, maybe that's an opportunity for him to stabilize compared to Shaded Next Ramage, which needs some time to ramp up. Uh, other just, than that, against a other than aggro, it's like you usually want the next Ramus, but in this scenario, it's pretty good. Oh yeah, it's definitely a good card. And I'm thinking that maybe Druid of the Flame will uh, create a new archetype for Druids. Maybe Watcher, maybe Watcher Druid will be back because looking at the two five, the, the especially played on turn three, what I want to have is Defender Vargas and get it a, a free seven, a free six stones. So um, still, um, right now players got the new card and they are definitely trying it. Here in this situation, getting double to fives wow. against this shaman, that's so deadly. Those totems are not going to survive at all. Yeah, very difficult to deal with. Um, this gives Tides the ability to preemptively get ahead on board. And he's drawn okay um, so far. Pretty good to start things off, but he's going to need to start picking up some minions because if he draws every single spell combination, you know, Savage or force of nature uh he's just gonna have responses to the board and this minion already the yeti it's gonna be a boulder fist ogre status is already problematic also there is another important part that um you know sixo is playing mech shaman and the deck is known like people pro players they know what's inside and what's not the card that's actually omitted here is lightning storm like not everyone plays lightning storm and mech shaman so you can just go and overextend a bit because you feel like uh, he's not going to lightning storm this board, or is it's less likely than against normal midrange shaman. Wow, reversing switch. That's somewhat humorous considering Whoa. the uh, the druid of flame is exactly the inverse of each other. Well, even like getting the extra three points of damage when you reverse switch the the two five, but here still I think just uh, getting the desert drake drawing card. So powerful, and Sixo is already at 16. Uh, after the attack, he will be at 12. And you know, oh, he has right. we haven't considered the possibility 
uh, like at the very beginning of the game, whether or not Shaman can survive the Druid. But uh, now it seems like the board has been taken by uh, by the, the Shaman player. And Mark there the is Mark of the Wild. So that's that's definitely the card to enable the Druid of the Flame. Really interesting from Tides. Really interesting. How much damage? He's got seven damage this turn. Mm. Nine points of damage with the switch, I believe. Wait, is that oh, right? It's even it's even ten, I think. So if you switch is five plus two is seven, eight with uh hero power. It's really, really close actually. Is there any merit in trying to mill six so here? That's maybe if you are able to mill somehow, that's more points of damage. Oh, trading with the fire elemental. It's yeah, forcing the Thal Reaver to attack into it, saying you don't have any removal or burn, or if you do, I'll be really sad. Well, for now, Sixo doesn't have any removal for that. Uh, he can set up Anotrons, but then Dr. Boom is a better play. So for Tides, I think he can just leave it as it is. Yeah, but then what's funny is that there is the, um, the reversing switch on the other end. Uh, that's that's actually the right play considering that his opponent did have uh, a way to punish originally. Yeah. And uh, now, now it's just like the other way back. Just reverse the four one into one four, kill it easily, and develop your board. Well, Sixo is stabilizing. If not for the ancient of Laurentide's hand, Sixo will be in a very good position here. And now Six already uses mind control tech, but imagine if he drew that. What? He plays Maligos. Maligos drew it from Tides of Time again. Well, when I casted Tides of Time for the first time in my life, he was playing Maligos Druid at Value Town. Uh, I think it was versus Era, and he had a very nice run there. So Tides is one of those guys who really experiments with the decks. He is a deck builder. As well as Sixo, I, I guess. Like, Sixo brought this mech shaman. This, I think this is his original build. But he's got a recombobulator in it. That's so interesting. Alright, well, well nice intervention. play here from Sixo to Earthshock. Not just to remove the effect, but also to buff it back up to basically eight attack, almost full status. And I think Tides might have to bow out of this one. There's no way for him to catch back up on board. He might Wrath for one just to see what options, but even if he gets big game hunter, he is in big trouble right now. Yeah, the board from Sixo is just amazing with so many big creatures and those Anitrons protecting the setup. Even the Whirlwind's Apomatic. Really intense board. And uh, maybe that's why like this Shaman actually works. Um, sometimes you just get some damage early, but you are able to deal with whatever your opponent throws at you. And then you just play all those big minions, protect them, and then take the game from there. What's interesting is that uh, Tides got the draw he wanted, didn't he? He got two Druids of the Flame and Innervate. It's just that after that, he drew a little awkwardly, and his opponent played Fel Reaver, and he didn't have a response to it. So... Even though Tides had one of the most anti-aggro decks, Fel Reaver pulled through. This is like another case where people keep laughing at Fel Reaver, but when you start realizing if it just hits the face once, twice, uh, maybe even a little bit more, then you just win the game. Um, from that point on, pairing together damage is really easy for an aggressive deck. So really cool to see Fel Reaver once again in action. But I'm sort of glad that Tides lost here so that we get to see the Druid deck a little bit more often. He's required to win with it in order to win the series. Can he do it? Oh, I, I certainly hope that he will and um, that we are going to see more of the Druid. So I hope that he's going to pick the Druid now against one of the remaining Sixo decks. Uh, the series is tied one to one, so both players need to still win with uh, the remaining decks. That's Rogue and Warlock for Sixo and Warrior and Druid for Tides. Um, I was thinking Tides is going to bring a normal warrior, but then after seeing the Malaga's Druid of the Flame Druid, I'm not sure about anything anymore. Both the, of those guys are like deck, build, deck builders. They brought new cards, new deck ideas. Um, I hope that Sixo brought a Zoo with Gang Boss, but we'll, we'll definitely see. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, I'm guessing Tides is just playing normal warrior too, so he's going to want to line that up against the Rogue. Uh, I don't know how this druid fares against other decks. I would guess that if you 
wild growth well into an innervate emperor and then get Mali ghost cheapened with like swipe to three mana then it's like then you can i don't know i'm just i'm thinking of like wild scenarios but like it seems like the deck requires a little bit more like a little bit better draws and sequencing luck than uh freeze mage because the whole we haven't of, seen what, we haven't seen anything to justify maligos by the way like maligos was just there as a wild card I have to imagine emperors in the deck, but even if you reduce wrath to one mana and swipe to three, it's like that's still awkward for Maligos. You need Innervate to really make those big plays. Um, not not the same as you know when you have Frostbolt and Ice Lance, which makes it cost one mana collectively if you get it reduced. All right, I think our players are ready, so we can jump into the game and. See what is going to happen. Is Tides going to bring his Malagos Druid again with Druids of the Flame? He opts to take his War deck versus Sixos. All right, when I see Dire Wolf Alpha, I'm thinking Zoo. It should be Zoo. Um, maybe it just has Zoo with Imp Gang Boss, and that replaces Harvest Golem. So that way you have a different kind of sticky minion. It, it functions very similarly to Harvest Golem, although. It has ability to scale even better just because, you know, the the fact that you can taunt it with Defender of Argus and, and still take out stuff and spawn the 1-1 one, one is really annoying for your opponent. Oh, yeah. You can also, I think, play the Void Colors. I guess uh, players still need to test it, but with, when you have so many demons and you can also avoid um, Doom Guard's drawback through discarding cards, I think Void Color makes some sense, but still... Um, Maybe it doesn't. It's all. It all needs to be tested. The Gangboss, coin Gangboss in turn two is just an amazing, and powerful play. Look at that respect. He executes Gang Gangboss. It's just so powerful, man. Like that card is nuts. The moment I saw it, I was like, I thought about it, and I was like, eh. And then I thought about it again. And I was like, whoa, this card is insane. It's yeah. like. Just because of the amount of pressure that it puts on your opponent, it like weakens AOE, um, but at the same time, it like creates this dynamic where because it's a demon, it's still a threat because of other stuff with demons too. So like if you ever have, like say you're running Mischief of Pain, it's just like another target where if you get demon fire off or demon heart, it's just like ridiculous. So I'm I'm looking forward to see how people can uh, can really synergize with Imp Gang Boss. Not to mention that. Like, if you Bane of Doom, you might get that card, too, which improves it better than just, you know, Flame Imp and Voidwalker. Oh, yeah, definitely. Gambos is, is really strong. And um, here, 6-0 playing Zill versus the Warrior uh, will be an amazing matchup for 6-0. Like, we, matched, we mentioned it before in the Ardu Freshka match, even though Ardu was playing a different kind of Warlock. Uh, here with the Zoo and this beginning, like, Tide's not really able to do anything. <laughs> Tide's actually AFK'd while pointing something. Uh, oh, he was pretending like he had something, and then he just armored up. Uh, yeah, he's got nothing right now. He, he's he got Brawl next turn. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how oh. Sixo interpreted that. He's like, yeah, maybe he has Shield Slam, he just doesn't want to use it. Oh, boy. Well, Sixo didn't have many plays anyway, so just um, tapping made a lot of sense. Uh, setting up the Derby Egg just to have a, a bit more brawl value. And uh, Tides has to brawl here or doesn't? Like It's so awkward because when you brawl, yeah, I don't think it's a brawl turn really. Then what do you it's do? It's not because the, it has such sharp potential to backfire. If any of the three twos survive and you kill the egg, it, you actually leave seven power on board. It's about it's exactly the same as it was before and it's a 50 percent chance likelihood so I, I think you'd rather just use the fire war axe be in a position where you can kill the egg and then brawl yeah and also not playing the brawl in five maybe will send a message that brawl is not there so sixo is just taking it right now and um playing whatever he has on the other hand sixo doesn't really care about the brawl that much because something will be left on board. He has this uh, Haunted Creeper, he has Doom, um, Doom Guard and a Power of Warming, so he's really getting closer to lethal. 
All right, for bro, we can see the egg. The wow. Spiders. That was a terrible result for Sixo. That was like the one thing he didn't want to survive. Because there's like only one power on the board. Yeah. The spider is not doing much, but it's doing something. And uh, But then again, Baron Geddon might help Dites to come back. Also, Dr. Boom, you know. It was green. So oh. just playing it was snap decision. Four, uh, four plus uh, that two Seven. is six plus has ten. So he has one damage off lethal. Yeah, that's and three taps. Dope. Very reasonable. Tries to see if he can go for the game-winning push here. Oh man, the gang boss behind the taunt is so annoying because right. then the player who gets the gang boss dictates where to trade, how tr how to trade, and how many minions he wants to have on board. Armor Smith and Shield Maiden is pretty clutch, considering how much uh, he's going to control the state of the board. I mean, if Sixo can't stabilize with, or sorry, can't uh, end the game before Tide stabilizes, I think Tide is just going to come back with a with a vengeance. Oh yeah, especially with with the cards he has, like uh, with Geddon, Taskmaster, just ready. Like if Sixo, will, uh, if Tides of Time will be able to make a move for lethal. Like look at this right now. Um, well, he won't be able to activate Grumash next turn. But with this armor smith, he's back to 17. Yeah, he's back to 17. Uh, Sixo is four damage off from killing his opponent. He's using power bombing now, just playing his hand, and maybe he can get Doom Guard number two. Well, he still needs to kill the armor smith, so. Right. Needs to do something so that way he doesn't uh, doesn't get punished. Shooting one on the imp gang boss is terrible. That's that's exactly what Sixo wanted. So how much damage Sixo has right now? That's um, three, five, ten, right? Oh man, uh, but it gets slam. shut down by shield slam, and now he's got Baron Geddon or Ragnaros. Ragnaros. I mean, both are. Equally weak here. Okay, so he goes Gromash. Well, Tyson oh, knows yeah. that sure. there's no way he's going to die, right? With uh, five points of damage on board, and just <laughs> even getting Power of Wilming into Doomguard uh, would right. not be enough. Unfortunately for Tides, uh, and Tixel picked up the right card here. He's got Defender of Argus. And that barely keeps him alive for now and puts some reasonable pressure onto the board. And don't forget, again, Ragnaros and Baron Geddon. Not the highest of impact. Uh, wait, is Baron Geddon much better now? Oh, That's man, that now. Fiery War Axe. That yeah. was so clutch. All right, so that ends the game here. And uh, that means Tides takes a 2-1 lead, and he's going to have to play the Druid deck again. Whoa, what a game. And uh, now we're going to see the Malagas Druid. But still, like, Zoo versus Warrior, uh, even though Tides didn't get um, a good opening, he was able to somehow turn the game around. Uh, so I, I guess like the Zul versus Warrior matchup has to be evaluated because both decks got the cards. Like before, Zul had an advantage always versus Warrior, but right now Zul got a couple of new cards. Implosion, which is not that great versus Warrior. Gangos is great, but then Warrior got the Shield Maiden and um, what are the, the other new cards um, that Warrior got? Uh, you mean from GVG? Yeah, from GVG and maybe BRM. Uh, well, the new cards from Black Rock Mountain that's out is Axe Flinger, and that doesn't really fit in Control Warrior. Um, and then it gets in Rage, which is, which is like, which is like Consecration, but with Mortal Strike, I guess. It, I don't, rem I don't remember how exactly it works, but um, I don't really think the new Black Rock Mountain cards help Control Warrior as much as it did with. Uh, you know, Death Spite and Shield Maiden. Those were like really big cards that helped. Oh a yeah. Lot. All right. So Ties of Time is left with his Maligos Druid deck. Well, it's weird to call it Maligos Druid deck because we haven't seen much to um, support Maligos, but we've seen Druids of the Flame. We've seen Mark of the Wild, and Sixo has his Rogue and the Zoo deck. Zoo deck versus Druid. How do you think that will work out for Sixo? Uh, I would have to feel like. It's similar to how Ramp Druid functions, where if Tides can stabilize, there'll just be a point where you just you're not able to run over Druid whatsoever. For example, all Tides has to do is put 
Mally Ghost with Mark of the Wild. And there's no, there's nothing getting past that wall. That is like the world's yeah. biggest Ancient of War. So if that can happen, which I'm assuming the game won't last that long, there is a win condition. So with that in mind, all Tides has to do is stabilize. Traditional Druid versus Zoo is very difficult for Druid just because you can't keep up with the pace. Swipe is even less effective now that Imp Gang Boss is around. Unless you swipe directly on Imp Gang Boss, but then you're giving up like your kill on Flame Imps and Knife Jugglers. So I think it's going to be very one-sided if 6-0 draws well and Ties doesn't get the similar start. But we saw that Druid of the Flame had pretty significant uh, impact. It's just too bad Ties couldn't close it out. Oh, there is an Antique Heal bot. I'm, I'm, I just don't know what he's playing. I'll just uh, message Ties after... Uh, after we stop casting, I'll be like, all right, Tides, just huh. help me here. I, I want to know what? more about this deck. Okay, well, Mark of the Wild makes sense with Faces Manipulator, but it's like... It's just like, what? what is going on here? I don't even know. So what we, what we can see is that he is setting up a Taunt Well with um, the Dread of the Flame, taunting it up, and then, I guess, uh, using Faceless on it to get a Taunt Well, then you heal yourself with heal bots. And you kind of want to survive versus aggro. And Maligos will be... Like, you want to survive as long as possible to get Maligos and then win. But how exactly? Not sure yet. Um, all right, he's going to play M Gang Boss and then Tides will Mark of the Wild, kill it. Or maybe even Coin Swipe because there is that, quote, bug, right? Oh, yeah. he's got a Mark of the Wild on Echoing Ooze. That's even crazier. <laughs> Whoa. Or does he All have right. to do it? Because, uh, I mean, it doesn't kill him, Gang Boss. But how can you pass up that value? It's insane. And he has that swipe, so he's not really worried right. about the tokens. Stronger. Uh, it's a stronger Feral Spirits, and you don't get overloaded. That's pretty sick. So, Tides of Time combining Mark of the Wild with Druids of the Flame and building his deck around the, the card. Personally, I don't like buffs that much. Because um, buffs in card games, if you lose the card with the buff, uh, you lose the advantage, like card advantage, mo most of the time. But maybe Tyus was able to actually make it work. Oh, is it? did it get fixed? I think they fixed it. No, no, no. So what happens is if you swipe on Ip Gang Boss, I think it kills it. If you don't swipe on it, like you swipe another target, it spawns a 1-1. One -one. Does that right. make sense? It's like yeah, it's like the funny. way the animation works is like how swipe hits a minion first and then swipes across the screen. Yeah, so it's a, it's very quirky, but um, it sort of makes sense if you can if you can pair that together. Uh, Azure Drake fall, falls into the hand for tides, but he opts to go for five two. What? <laughs> He's really aggressive with this deck. I love it. Yeah, I was like, he's because his opponent's at 18 health, so I'm guessing he's gonna try to use it to pick apart his opponent's health and then reduce him life tapping. Well, and it's and, not like Zoo has a lot of removal cards, right? Like implosion, but then he's seen one implosion already. This is so funny. Yeah, that's eight points of damage. But it's in magma device. rager mode. <laughs> <laughs> but it might work. Uh, it's going to do damage. You're right. It's going to work to a certain extent. Uh, and now Tides is in a position to pressure 6-0 out with Magma Rager. This is insane. 6-0 has to trade this. Like He is on the brink of dying. And also, I think life tapping is locked. Like You can't life tap in this position because another swipe is going to kill you here. Also, what do you expect coming from Tides? I, I'm not sure, man. Um, Tides can drop this Ancient of Lore. Oh, oh he, picked, he has Lethal. Uh, uh, Do Doomguard Faceless is actually yeah. Lethal because oh, he gets the charge. <laughs> <This is> so <laughs> crazy. Uh, well, that's that does it. The series is over. And Tides wins with a very uncanny mix of cards that you wouldn't expect be thrown together. But... Um, I haven't I seen that just happened, man. in a long time, man. Like I love faceless as like, a card. Like like if you if if he actually just put Magma Major in his deck it would have functioned exactly as Drew of the Flame. I know he called it made fun of it a little bit, but that's exactly what happened and Tides won three one. So there is hope. 
to anybody who's uh, who, who Got the feels like they have to draft Magma Rage in their arena deck. It can do wonders. Oh yeah, I uh, I, I love the deck. Like I love both of the decks. I love the new Zoo from Six O, and uh, it's cool that <laughs> Zoo is kind of back. And uh, oh, I love the new perfect. Druid. But I, I definitely want to like know more about the, this, this Druid deck. So I will ask guys after we finish. All right. Wow. Um, well, that does it for the second series of the day. We have Kalento versus Gara coming up on stream. Uh, tell your friends about what you just saw because that just happened. Tides takes out six oh three to one with Druid of the Flame in in Magma Rager mode. I don't even know what the actual mode is called. I just know that it's like a fox versus a bird. We'll be back, guys, in just a minute or two after we recover. So stay tuned.